And now, despite criticism from politicians and business leaders, uh, plus a possible legal challenge, the government's quarantine policy comes into force today. It does. And Sean is at a very quiet Manchester airport to see how it will all work. Morning. Any passengers yet? No, no. Well, we've seen one maybe waiting for a departure uh, get going into the terminal this morning. Normally, there'd be Spanish phrase books galore, wouldn't there? People jet setting off for their, their summer holiday. We're getting into peak season. 600 flights, Manchester Airport would be expecting to get through. They're getting about 1% of passengers that they'd normally get at this time of year. So it's quiet here. It's quite a Terminal 1 where we may see some arrivals coming through in sort of an hour or so's time. But it's not just the airport. When we talk about the wider impact of the industry, these poor cab drivers, uh, some of them have been queuing up overnight waiting for their first pickup. Why aren't they going to the city centre? Well, they've told me this morning that that's because there's no work there either. So it is worth them waiting here to see if they maybe get some of those arrivals. And, and what's changing today? Well, let's have a look at a few of the new rules that are coming in today. So, so first off, if you are one of the people flying into the UK, you're going to have to fill in a form. And when you fill in that form, you're going to have to say, where you're going to self-isolate. And if you don't fill in that form, you could be liable for a fine. So up to £100 in England, you could be uh, fined. Now, if you don't actually follow through with that self-isolation and put on the form the address that you're going through uh, when there are those random spot checks being put in place, then you could also uh, be, uh, uh, be uh, fined at some point in the future as well. So in England, that could be up to £1,000. In Scotland, it's a bit less, at £480, but that could go up to £5,000 for repeat offenders. Um, and then overall, you need to make sure you get to your address and you need to stay there for 14 days. Finally, there are many other things that you need to be taking into place, but you do need to make sure that once you've self-isolated, that you stay at that address for 14 days and the authorities will follow up. There are exemptions though. Uh, anyone arriving from Ireland, the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man won't have to fill in the form uh, and self-isolate. You still need to go through some of those procedures. There are lots of uh, jobs on the list as well, about 41 other exemptions. Uh, people who are travelling for work, fruit pickers, nuclear power station workers, those kind of things who will have to make sure that they are letting the right authorities know that they do not need to self-isolate and those checks will be in place in the weeks to come. So I'm just hear hearing a taxi start up there, I thought there might have been a passenger, probably just keeping himself self warm. Now, there are a few issues right across the industry that a lot of uh, businesses have. If we look at some of the main airlines, the likes of British Airways, EasyJet, Ryanair, they've started these legal proceedings. So they've written this letter to the government saying that these quarantine measures that are being put in place from today are unjustified, illogical. And they have a few concerns. Some are that actually they think the measures for those people who are having to isolate, who are arriving into the UK through terminals like these, and then having to self-isolate and potentially getting those fines, those measures are harsher for people who day to day, those we've been talking about for weeks now, who may have to self-isolate if they have symptoms or they're diagnosed, uh, test positive for coronavirus. So they think that's harsh. And also they think why are we preventing people from travelling into the UK from other countries that have lower infection rates than the UK. And that's one of the reasons that Air Bridges that we've, we've discussed and is still very much under discussion between the government and industries. This idea of having a, an agreement between the UK government and other governments around the world where there is a, an agreement that quarantine measures would not need to be put in place when passengers arrive in that country, that idea of an air bridge is a popular one in the industry because they would then hope that that would help alleviate some of the struggles they're having, the costs that they have now. The costs of this building, this Manchester airport, still need to pay for this to be up and running, but they don't have the income coming in that they would have previously. So many things that the industry would like to see. I'm going to be talking to the boss of Manchester Airport Group a little bit later this morning to see what they think the effect on jobs will be. Heathrow have said this morning 25,000 jobs could be at risk there. Uh, and also what they really need to see put in place for things to improve. I'm um, Sean, thank you very much. Uh, so much to minutes part, past eight. Very good morning to you. Uh, from today, anyone arriving in the UK by plane, ferry or train will be asked to self-isolate for two weeks as part of new quarantine rules. How exactly will it work? Well, shortly we'll hear from our reporters in Manchester and Amsterdam. But first, let's go to our transport correspondent, Tom Burridge, who's at Stansted Airport for us this morning. Morning to you, Tom. Anyone who's been anywhere near an airport normally at a time like this will know it is eerily quiet behind you this morning. 
Morning, Dan. Yeah, really quiet. I'm wearing a mask because that's one of the new rules here at Stansted Airport. Everyone inside the terminal should cover their face. And we just had people coming out through those doors a second ago from Dublin. Now, everyone arriving from the Republic of Ireland will not have to self-isolate. So those people will not have to stay at a private residence for two weeks. But the next flight in is from Eindhoven in the Netherlands. They will have to follow the new rules. Now, You'll come into the terminal here and you'll really get a sense. Remember, this is the second week of June. We're moving towards the busy, busy summer season. And normally this would be absolutely heaving. Now, before you get into the UK now, 48, within 48 hours, you can hear the announcement telling people to keep their distance with inside the terminal here. They'll have to fill out that form. It's the public health passenger locator form. That's the form online that you now have to fill out. In theory, you should get private transport once you get into the airport. But if you have to go through those doors and go on to the Stansted Express, if that's your only option, the train, then you are allowed to do so. But this is the problem for airlines and the travel sector. Really, no one's travelling right now. They want to ramp up their schedules in the coming months, and they say that this quarantine, the new rules, adds another level of uncertainty and therefore people won't be booking they say but we've been speaking to some passengers heading out on the small number of flights leaving Stansted this morning people heading to places like Portugal and Germany it feels a bit late to be honest I don't know why that sort of I mean I think it's fine that they're introducing it but I don't understand why they didn't introduce it beforehand the self isolation thing for two weeks I think it's a good idea it's like it's to be extra careful we need to have those rules, otherwise it could like, you know, it, we could have a second wave and we don't want that. I think it makes no sense because in Germany it's a rate less than here and to infect is more likely here in the UK than in Germany. So for me it makes no sense if I come from Germany, it's not a risk for the UK. So I don't understand, so make makes no sense. Well, you can see there are some people here, so we're going to keep back, keep our distance inside the terminal. But if we were to go beyond that, you'd see the Jet 2 check-in area, the biggest tour operator in the UK, and they're facing that massive headache at the moment because they're trying to get people booking. Places like Portugal, the Portuguese government last week told me uh, that they want British tourists to go there and that they are in favour of having one of those deals. They're called air bridges and it effectively would be an agreement between the UK and countries with low infection rates. Now, the fact that there are none of those deals currently in place, that this is a near blanket travel quarantine, well, that is making the airline sector, the travel sector more broadly, very, very angry. And we've seen over the weekend British Airways or the parent company of British Airways effectively saying that it's now launching legal proceedings against the government. They've got backing from EasyJet, from Ryanair and dozens of travel and hospitality firms. But the government says the quarantine measures which are taking effect this morning at airports across the UK and at ports and at the Eurostar and Eurotunnel 2 the, the Home Secretary Priti Patel says it's necessary. She says that as the virus, the prevalence of the virus comes down here in the UK, the travel quarantine is necessary because any cases being imported into the UK would have a much greater impact on the overall prevalence of the virus. And therefore, she says it's necessary to stop a potential second wave. Now, we'll go to Anna Holligan, my colleague. Well, this is Amsterdam Schiphol. And this is one of Europe's busiest travel hubs, although you wouldn't necessarily guess it by looking at the scene here today. I've just had a quick scan of the departures board. Nine flights heading from this airport to the UK today. And in fact, the first one uh, departs for Heathrow in about one minute's time. Um, you can see behind some of the extra measures in place here. So there are some... Uh, footprints on the floor to give a guide for social distancing. In fact, you'll see a lot of people are wearing face masks, but they're not actually required in the airport, only at points during the journey where it's impossible to maintain that level of 
social distancing. Um, and of course, there are some exemptions for uh, essential medical workers, road haulage workers. Uh, and I was just speaking to one young chap who'd been at sea for eight weeks, and he said that he had an exemption. He showed me multiple forms. Uh, and there are a lot of people travelling today uh, for various reasons who I've been speaking to, but they are carrying so much paperwork, aware of the fact that if they travel to the UK, it will be 14 days of quarantine, uh, a fine of up to a thousand euros. If they fail to isolate, uh, self-isolate in England, about 480 pounds, sorry, thousand pounds in the UK. And, um, and so if they do return to the Netherlands, in fact, they would also be asked to quarantine again here for another 14 days, because as far as the Dutch government is concerned, Sweden and the UK are still areas of greater risk. Um, the staff here are working from behind plastic screens and on board people are required to wear a face mask. In terms of the enforcement, police, border officials, health officials will be conducting uh, spot checks. I was speaking to, to one passenger who's flying today about whether he was anxious about getting on board a plane and he said, well, Actually, he was heading to Manchester. Actually, it's probably safer and cleaner today than uh, than ever. And in fact, we can look now at what this means from a business perspective. My colleague Sean Farrington is in Manchester. Yeah, morning, everybody. Uh, it is pretty quiet here at Manchester Airport this morning. Normally, there'd be 600 flights getting into peak season going through Manchester Airport in at this time of year every single day today maybe 10 arrivals 10 departures so far there's just been a couple of flights landed from Dublin this morning so where those people who are arriving from Dublin they don't necessarily need to self-isolate for those next 14 days because that's a country they're coming from that is exempt but all of this has to be managed by the bosses at Manchester Airport Group it's having a big impact on the industry as a whole I've got Tricia Williams with me who's the Chief Customer Officer here at Manchester Airport Group morning you, Tricia. Good morning. Can you give us an idea of what passengers so airside who arrive now into Manchester Airport are having to go through as part of these checks? Well, the new quarantine arrangements uh, came in today. They're managed through our Border Force colleagues and as somebody comes off a plane and goes to the immigration control, they're having their documentation checked to make sure that they have come from where they said they've come from and that they have got a place to go. And then as we understand it, all of those checks are carried out by the Border Force and then they will do spot checks at the forwarding addresses. And so actually those flights that have landed from Dublin this morning, in theory, you know, th those passengers are exempt from these rules. So is, are they having any checks going on at all about you know, where they've initially started their journey? Yes, they are. So even though um, if you're flying from Ireland, it is exempt, they are still having the documentation checked. Now, this is not the normal scene, is it, that you'd no. be used to at Manchester Airport Group? So how, how much of an impact is this having on your business? The fact that, you know, almost quarantine or not, for starters, so few people are flying. Yeah, it's had a, a dramatic impact on our business. Uh, since April, we've lost about 99% of our business. So as you mentioned, we would normally have 600 uh, air traffic movements at Manchester in a busy day in June. We're down to about 20 with very few customers actually coming through. So we want to know how the quarantine arrangements will change and will be relaxed to enable safe travel to happen. So do you see jobs at risk in your business? Because we had Heathrow this morning saying it could be 25,000 jobs at risk there. We know the airlines have announced thousands and thousands of jobs that are going to have to go over recent weeks. What about for you? Our priority is to protect as many jobs as we can. We know we will not be immune. Uh, the quarantine will uh, significantly impact people's confidence to fly. Uh, the government have committed to review the quarantine arrangements every three weeks and what we want to know is how that review will be uh, taken place so that we can understand what processes systems we can put in place to enable us to protect as many jobs as we possibly can. So if things like the air bridges are put in place as Tom was explaining a bit before about how they work agreements with other governments, would an air bridge put in place with certain countries that enable more people to fly and land and fly out of Manchester Airport, would that save jobs in your business? Undoubtedly, it will save jobs. Um, we want to understand how air bridges will happen. Um, when there are eight drops in the UK, clearly um, there are countries in Europe and, and other parts of the world where the rate is already low. So we believe there should be a way of customers being able to travel safely between uh, two countries, between the UK and any of those countries where the R value is lower. We want to understand how that will happen so that we 
can facilitate that as best we can. We've already put some processes in place here. Uh, we have temperature checking, we're giving out face masks to travelling customers and whilst um, we don't know what the processes will be, we will do our utmost to make sure that travel is as safe as possible. If things don't change, can you see yourselves having to escalate your, what you would do with regards to the government's processes, the way the airlines have, the airlines have written to the government starting these legal proceedings, is that on the cards for you? We want to work proactively with the government. Um, they've already said they will establish a cross-industry body to look at the review of the quarantine arrangements to enable safe travel. So where we want to work with the government, we want to be right at the forefront of that work so that we can trial and test processes and get those in place ready for people to be able to travel safely. And can you give us an idea on the wider impact of, of the region here? I mean, we've seen one taxi depart yeah. this morning, for example, and they're still queuing up around us, hoping maybe some passengers arrive. The GMB union this morning warning that regional jobs could be most at risk. What, what is the effect of a an almost empty Manchester airport on the area. Yeah, Manchester airport and our other airports are hugely important for the local economy. They support thousands, tens of thousands of jobs, whether they be taxis or whether that be our own um, people who work for our own airports. So it's hugely important and um, quarantine will impact that, no doubt. Uh, so that's why we want to work with the government to ensure that we can review the quarantine arrangements make sure that in three weeks time we've got in place whatever we need to because um, this industry we want to see this industry get back up and running other airports and airlines as well have talked about a third of jobs being at risk I mean could you see that being potentially a similar scale for yourself we've already taken many steps to cut costs so um, we've made sure we've we've um, taken steps already so we've removed contractors from our business we've all taken a pay cut uh, we want to try and limit the amount of um, job losses we would have we've got some fixed cuts that we can't do anything about whether you've got 20 movements or 600 movements we still have to pay for air traffic control business rates the police security so we want to make sure that we can sensibly look at our cost base but you can't take say steps. no redundancies i can't say no redundancies Trisha Williams, thank you very much uh, this morning. Trisha Williams there from uh, Manchester Airport Group, the Chief Customer Officer. A very tough time for the businesses here and all those that rely upon it. You know, as you come into the airport, you see that the higher car signs, all of these industries that rely on a, on a vibrant tourism industry and business travel industry, it's not happening at the minute. Very quiet here at Manchester Airport. Uh, as they look now, passengers who are arriving to deal with these measures, these new quarantine measures for the first time. Okay, um, there are real changes afoot, aren't there? Thank you so much, Sean.